What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. So you can see here I've got a table and some chairs that are just a little too small for me. That's because this is a kid's table and a chair set. So if you're looking for a video to make a DIY kid's table or a table that's just way too small for you, this is the video for you. So stay tuned for this video because I'll take you through all the steps, give you all the dimensions that I use to make this table so that you can make one for yourself. All right, let's get into the video. So to make the table top of this table, I'm using this 16 inch wide project panel. This is 16 inches wide and it's six feet long. So you could use any type of boards you wanted for the top, but since this project panel was already glued together and I could cut it to the length I wanted, that's what I chose to use. This is also a little bit cheaper than some of the other options that you might use whenever you're making a table top, so it worked out pretty well. So because this was 16 inches wide, if I double it up, it'll be 32 inches wide. So I first cross cut two pieces to 32 inches long then when I put those two pieces together I would have a 32 by a 32 inch board. So my miter saw will only cross cut somewhere around 12 to 14 inches so it's not quite long enough so all you have to do is cut on one side and then flip the board over line it up and you can cut on the other side. Next you just want to put the boards together so usually there will be one better edge on the side of these than the others so I flip them around several times until I find the best seam and then that is the seam that I'll use to glue them together. So I use big bar clamps to clamp these together. Now if you don't have bar clamps, you could do a pocket hole joint in the middle on the underside, which would hold them together fine. Since I have these large bar clamps, I just put a little bit of glue on one side of one board, and then I'll glue them together on that seam. So you don't need a ton of glue, just make sure that the glue is spread evenly, and then when you put them together, you can snug the clamps up. You don't want to tighten them very tight at this point yet, and then wipe off any excess glue that is on that seam. You can see here that the board's laid down pretty flat. Now sometimes they'll be a little bowed or as you tighten the clamp it can bow the boards a little bit. So if you find that one side is bowed upward a little bit like you can see right here, there's a couple options that you have. So the first would be to just push that down and then tighten the clamps. That'll work fine, but the way that I like to do it is to clamp another board across the two pieces together. And because this board that I'm clamping on top of these is already flat, if I clamp that board to the tabletop, then it'll force the other boards that make up the tabletop to lay flat. So I tighten those clamps down and then I tighten the big bar clamps. I let everything set and dry for about four hours here and then it was safe to take everything out of the clamps after that. Here's a first look at the tabletop, and the nice thing about this is because those original boards were 16 inches, there's only one seam to sand in the middle. So with the top piece of the tabletop finished up, it was time to start working on the frame. So the frame and the legs of this table are all made out of 2x4s. Now if you want the dimensions and the length of all the cuts that I'm making here, you can check out the description where I've included the length of everything that I used in this build. So I first cross cut the legs out and then I set the legs on the underside of the tabletop and measured the difference between the legs or the piece that was left over. This will be the length that the side aprons were. So I cross cut two pieces to become those side aprons out of two by fours and then I put pocket holes on each side of these which would allow me to connect them to the legs using screws. So I'm using the K4 jig here. This is a super fast and efficient way to make pocket holes. If you don't have this jig or you don't want to buy one, there is a less expensive option, which you can see right here. So this is the mini pocket hole jig, also by Craig, and all you do is clamp it onto the end and then you can drill in sideways. It does the exact same thing. It does take a little bit longer and it is kind of not as secure as the K4, but it's a much cheaper option if you want to go that route instead. After the pocket holes were put on each end of these apron boards, I put one hole on one side of the center. This would be used to attach the table top to the frame, which we'll see later in the video. So after I had all the pocket holes drilled out, it was time to lay everything out. Put a little bit of glue on the inside of the legs to help connect them to the frame, in addition to the screws that would go in the pocket holes, and then I clamped across this joint in order to keep everything secure in place while I put the screws in. So double check to make sure that everything is square and lined up, and then one thing I like to do is to put a clamp on each of the legs. Sometimes when you put the screws in at that angle in to the side of the board it can split at the top so putting a clamp in place there will help to prevent everything from splitting as those screws go in the side. I'm just using regular construction screws here. I don't really like to pay for the expensive Craig screws that have the flat end so it's fine to use regular screws as long as you don't over sink them which is why I'm putting the screw in very slowly in each shot. 
So after you have one side frame built, sometimes the other side frame will magically appear out of thin air, which is what happened there, which saved me a ton of time, AKA a couple minutes, since that first frame was super easy to build with those pocket holes. So when I have the frames put in place on the underside of the tabletop, I measure the difference between the two again, just like I did on the legs earlier. And then I'll cross cut three two by fours to that link and they'll fit in there perfectly to connect those together. Once again, I put two pocket holes on each end of each board that would go in the middle of the frame. Since you've already seen the pocket holes being made in the other boards, I only am showing you one board here. So I hope you don't feel like you're being cheated by only seeing one board out of the three. If you do feel like you're being cheated, then drop a comment below and let me know how you feel. I promise to you that I won't ever do this again until the next video, which means that I'll probably do it again. Okay, now I'm off topic and rambling about something that doesn't even mean anything. So back to the video. I put a little glue on each edge of the center frames and then I put them in place, equal spacing on each side, and then I put a clamp across and use screws in the pocket holes to secure them. One thing you can notice here if you pay attention to the outside boards is that they're straddling where the leg and the center piece come together. So there's one screw of each of those going into each piece. You don't have to 100% do it that way. It'll work fine if you put the boards out or inward a little bit further but I think that it keeps everything a little bit more secure so that's why I did it that way. So I wanted to build an outside frame around the piece which would hide where the top and the legs come together. So I used a three inch furring strip cut to the length that the top was on each side. So I don't actually measure it with the tape measure. I just hold the piece up, make a mark, and then I'll cut it to that length, which is what you can see me doing in this shot here. So do one set of opposite sides first because the extra width that those boards add on the outside of the frame will be added to the length that you'll need to cut these boards here. So after you have them measured, you just cross cut them to the new link and then you'll be able to make a nice perimeter frame around the outside of the table. So furring strips are usually pretty rough on both edges or at least one edge. So I use the table saw to rip one edge off of each piece of this. Now this will give a nice little flat edge which will go on the top. That way whenever these are put around the outside of the tabletop, there won't be a nasty ugly gap left by where the piece is rounded over on each edge. After cross cutting these perimeter pieces to length and then ripping one side off of them to get that nice edge that I mentioned earlier, it was time to put them onto the tabletop. So they'll go on the outside. You have to make sure that you have the two pieces lined up opposite of each other that are the same length. And then the other boards that are a little longer will go on the other opposite sides, taking into account that extra width added to where that other board was put on first. So to secure these onto the top, I'm using a little bit of glue and then some one and a quarter inch brass brad nails just brad nailed through that into the top board one tip i have here that i'd like to stress is to keep your fingers away from the exit point of the nail gun in case that brad nail has a little bit of spring out and goes upward that'll go right into your finger if you have your hands too close so just make sure you keep your fingers away from that so up to this point everything was coming along really nicely the table was starting to take shape and i had the top finished so i wanted to add a little bit of extra support onto the inside frame because i felt like it just wasn't quite sturdy enough so i cut some 45 degree angles on a piece of scrap 2x4 and then i'll use this for some corner braces on the upper part of the table up underneath where the top goes so i put them in place made a mark and then i ripped them to width so that it would be flush on both sides of that inside brace so looking back on this, I probably should have ripped it to width before I made those cross cuts, but sometimes that's just how things happen whenever you're building. So I just went with it. I was able to rip them to width. This way they would be flush with the inside of the table frame. So because I'll be using screws to secure these to the frame, I wanted to first drill pilot holes on each end of this, which would help prevent the board from splitting whenever I put those screws in. After I had them drilled, I just put a little bit of glue on each side, held them in place, and then they can be secured with screws. I think I'm using two and a half inch screws here. It really doesn't matter what the length of the screw is, just as long as it's long enough to go into the frame, but not so long to come out on the other side of the frame. 
Adding these corner braces really help to solidify the table, especially if it's being leaned on from side to side. And after each of the corner braces were secured in place, the frame would be complete. So here is a first look at the frame. The top just simply slides right down on top. Now I was a little tiny bit off square, so I had to tap it with a hammer, but it popped into place. And then you can see here, it passes the sitting test. Everything here is looking good on the table. And at this point, since the frame and the top are finished, we can move on to the finishing process. So I pretty much always prefer to use my paint sprayer whenever I'm painting a table rather than a paintbrush. Not that a paintbrush can't get you a good finish, it's just the paint sprayer takes so much less time and it's way more efficient than using a paintbrush. I'm using the Homerite Super Finish Max paint sprayer and it does a great job at helping me get a good finish on everything that I paint. While the paint on the frame was drying, I grabbed my sander and I sanded down the top of this. Now the project panel itself is pretty smooth to begin with. There was that one seam in the middle where I joined the boards together. There was a little bit of an edge on there, so I sanded that down and then you wanna go over the corners and the edges too. Especially because this is a kid's table, you really don't want any sharp edges on the side, so be sure to sand down all the corners and all the edges to get a nice smooth profile. After everything was sanded smooth, the next step was to put the stain on the top piece of the table. So I'm using early American wood stain here. Now I really like early American wood stain. I've used it a ton of times. It's super easy to work with and it always gives a nice finish. So pick out whichever stain you want and then you can go to town with staining the table top of this. One tip that I would have would be to stain with the grain, go in the direction of the grain, which will give you a nicer finish overall and help to blend that stain in with the natural look of the wood. I let the stain dry for a day or so and then it was time to attach the frame to the tabletop. So as I mentioned earlier, I was a tiny bit off square so I had to use a hammer to tap that in place. And then those pocket holes that we drilled on the outside frame earlier will be used to put the screw into the tabletop. And then on the inside, I drilled some holes and put screws through the frame into the tabletop as well. Now I know that using screws like this does not properly allow for wood movement over time, but I really wanted to keep this table as simple as possible and make it easy to attach the top. So if you want to use some type of fastener or Z-clip, by all means go right ahead, but in my opinion, it's not necessary for a table like this. And this table is not going to self-destruct or disintegrate over time just because I use screws rather than fasteners on the top. So now that I'm off my soapbox on that, it was time to put a little bit of polyurethane on top. I'm using gloss polyurethane and you just simply brush it on top. Again, try to go with the grain direction and when you're done, you want to smooth everything out going all the way from side to side, which will help prevent any streaks, splotches, and give the tabletop a great looking finish overall. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you like what you saw, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought. So this was a fun build. I really enjoyed making something different and hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.